How great is it to be back here at Cross 2020? We come to the exciting Kennel Club Vulnerable Breeze competition. This competition was launched in 2015. The Vulnerable Reeds returns You're to just the joining us. We're coming to you live from the main to arena here on day one at Cross 2020. And this I is the breeds. final of the Vulnerable Breeds the competition. Kind of it was launched here at Crufts in 2015 to raise awareness of vulnerable British and Irish breeds. I'm joined in the commentary box by Frank Kane. Now, these are breeds which, for which there have been fewer than 300 dogs registered last year. So they are endangered breeds and very important for our social history that we preserve them. And the Kennel Club is anxious to do that. They've sponsored stakes classes throughout the year at shows and these are the winners they've been prejudged in the outside ring but soon we'll see the shortlist and the eventual winner but before we meet the competition finalists we need to meet our judge so a big welcome to jack Paulson, and escorted into the ring by morris and Cook. And, and here's the judge, Jeff Horswell, one of our most experienced judges. He's bred many champions in Dachshunds, Field Spaniels, and some Whippets. So, uh, very experienced. He's looked at them already in an outside ring, so it won't take us long to get the shortlist. And we're now waiting the dogs. Welcome to Jeff Horswell. So... The first of the vulnerable breeds coming into the ring is the English setter. Here comes the first of our finalists, the clean lines and slashing well, tail of the English setter. setter. An orange Belton. And the here is another setter, the Gordon setter, the black and tan setter. The distinctive coat of the curly coated retriever. And I think that's the field spaniel, is it? Yes, it is. It's hard for me to see. And here comes the field spaniel. The Long leisurely stride necessary in that breed. The characteristic rolling gait of the Sussex Spaniel. The golden now liver colour. The working representative, the Mastiff. And overtaking is the Mastiff, the, the Brindle the Mastiff. Here comes the rough coated bearded Collie. Followed by the Lancashire Healer. And now the perky and little Lancashire healer, bl black and tan, pricked ears, full of character. The foxy head of the and Welsh we Corgi, and that's the cardigan hair. variety. That means it's got the long tail and slightly longer in the body than the Pembroke. And here's one of my, yes, a Glenivimal Terrier, something of a rare breed indeed. Only 109 of them registered last year. Now there's a real showman coming in here. We've got the Kerry Blue Terrier, lovely matching outfit there from the handler. And here is the Manchester Terrier. Distinctive outline, black and tan, wedge-shaped head, and striding out nicely. One of the iconic British breeds here, this is the Bloodhound. The elastic gait. Oh, and here, the Otterhound. Only 44 of these, so very few registered last year. So our judge is going to take a look so around the ring and select his shortlist. As we mentioned, he's judged them all previously, so this should be quite a quick look before he makes his shortlist. Again, he's measuring them against their breed standards. Many of them are already big winners. Some of them are champions here. He walks down the line, taking in their outlines. Looks like he's going to start his shortlist. Now, who's it going to be coming in? He's coming to this end of the line. The curly coat oh, retriever, a top dog in his breed for last year, the, the Sussex, Sussex Spaniel. Spaniel and the Mastiff. And in comes the Cardigan Corgi. The Kerry Blue Terrier. And the Manchester Terrier. And they are the final six for the shortlist for winning the Vulnerable Native Breeds final for 2020. And wonderful, even for those that made it through to the final, to showcase those breeds on such a big stage. Now, 
We'll probably see the dogs moved out to just check on their movement. Again, he's measuring them against their breed standard, which is closest to perfection. The curly cook, the biggest of the retrievers, with his tight astrakhan curls. Dogs do know a lot of winning. Bright Meadows never say die, and uh, he's had a great year. And now the judge sending him round. Here he's looking for the stride. The top line held firmly on the move. So next to move in our shortlist is the Sussex Spaniel. This one, this show champion Yorkham Rocking Rudolph. This should be a strongly built, active and energetic dog. And they have a characteristic role when they're moving. And a lovely golden liver coat. It's a bright liver with gold tips. One of the key points of the breed. It's the lowest to ground of all the sporting Spaniels. A lot of substance in that small frame. Sussex roll and, and here the English Mastiff Feynard Frankincense he's already a champion too a brindle these were are used to guard off uh, to warn off poachers kept by the gamekeepers and the brindle was the favorite color at one time because they were camouflaged in the in the woods at night used to be called the old oh, English Mastiff a lot of substance but there should also be athletic Showing great strength, but not cumbersome. That's how the breed standard describes them. He's just having a look around there. First experience of a big ring. And here is the cardigan corgi. This brindle and white. This foxy head and expression. These large ears. This one, a brindle and white. The tail carried just about level with the back. Very happy dog. These are descended from the Tickle family of dogs, which also produced the Dax Hund. And this one in front of us is another champion, Josetta Fraser Nash. He's a male dog, and his owner has been coming to Cross for 67 years, which and is worthy of an award, and surely. And had <laughs> many best of breeds here as well. And here's this young Kerry Blue Terrier, full of style. The Kerry Blue, a native of Ireland, and it's born black, and the, the coat goes to shades of blue by the time it's 18 months of age they should be compact powerful but with gracefulness and they should always be alert and determined and this one is in this long punishing head and that plentiful soft silky coat so next we have the manchester terrier with its distinctive outline and these this were bred for country pursuits unlike many terrier breeds so they were actually developed for ratting <laughs> in the industrial revolution they were they used to keep the vermin down in the factories and uh, distinctive well, outline this arch the over the loin and a fall away black and tan and on the legs if you look closely you'll see thumbprints in the tan markings which is a breed feature this is already a champion had, had some very good wins in the breed and uh, is looking very good today Great experience for them in a big ring like this. Many of the dogs have not experienced such an atmosphere before, so they've all put on good performances. So Jeff now just taking a final look down the line. He's called for his board, so we're going to get a winner and a reserve. Frank, any guess? Uh, I think he might like the Manchester and the Curly Coat. They would, they might be, my, and, and the Cardigan, lovely as well. So they might be the three for me. I really like that Kerry Blue, but I will bow to your experience. Our winner, oh, the oh, Sussex Spaniel has won it, yes. Our Sussex Spaniel, so that's show yes. champion Yorking Rocking Rudolph, owned yes. by Mr and Mrs Evans. And it's a sort of rolling Rudolph as well, because the it typical is. Sussex roll. Oh, the old English Mastiff, the Brindle Mastiff, Feynard wins it. So that's owned by Mr Zada. Feynard Frankincense, Fantastic. and he's the runner-up. And there's our winner, the Sussex Spaniel. Ah. I think we can have a quick word from our winner here. I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm so proud of him. And I know his owner's in the audience and she's probably fallen out of her chair. Now, is this the one that has quite a story behind it? Yes. Um, I found him when I was walking my flat coats and suggested they might like to show him because I thought he might do quite well. And what you mean when you found him? You didn't just literally found him roaming around. 
know, we were out on a dog walk and I said to them, that's a lovely Sussex. And maybe, you know, he walked to show and they didn't know what showing was. So, and so Susan's husband went home and told Susan that he'd met a mad woman and that she wanted to go to dog shows. And that's how the story began. And this one has done quite a lot of winning, hasn't it? He's won seven CCs and seven reserve CCs. I mean, you know, he'd go for anyone. He doesn't need a handler. Well, so. many congratulations to you. A Sussex Spaniel topping the Vulnerable Breeds competition. Congratulations. Thank you. So a nice story. The, uh, the handler spotting him in the park and suggesting to the owners that they should show him. She took him on and she's made him into a champion for them. What a great day, and the owners are in the audience too. This wonderful little Sussex Spaniel, yes. I think we're going to have a lap of honour now, well deserved. So this is show champion Yorkham Rocking Rudolph, the winner of the Vulnerable Breeds competition here at Crufts 2020. And not forgetting our reserve, the Mastiff champion Feynard Frankincense. Thanks.